What's up everyone, it's Jamie here from Shopify Masterclass and today we're gonna to cover a Shopify sales funnel. So what a sales funnel is, is you're gonna lead the customer through different steps in your sales process. And it's just gonna funnel them down because at each step, you're just gonna leave. So your funnel's gonna get smaller, the number of people's gonna get smaller, but at the end, they want you to reach your goal or you want them to reach their goal. So that goal, for example, for all Shopify stores would be a purchase of the product. Before we start this video, I just wanna quickly thank our sponsor. Discover ProfitCalc, the affordable and easy to set up Shopify app that crunches your numbers in just one click. It automatically syncs with all your accounts and expenses to calculate your profit displaying everything in an easy to read dashboard so you understand your business in real time. Start for free on the Shopify App Store today. Funnels have become really popular over the last few years with software such as ClickFunnels, which is really good at converting customers. And so that's why funnels have become so popular because it's an easy way to visualize how your customers are proceeding throughout their customer journey and how they're improving each step so that customers are more likely to purchase. So this is my basic diagram of the funnel here. I'm just gonna scroll over to the basic steps for a Shopify funnel. So you actually don't need any custom software for Shopify because the basic sales funnel process is built in automatically which with the purchase sequence. So I'm just gonna scroll here. So this basic sales funnel is, start off with your advertising or organic search and your customers are gonna land on a product page. You want them to go to a product page rather than the home page because this gives you more control over the flow and it's a little more direct and allows for better remarketing and follow up if you know they viewed a certain product. So if we start off with advertising here, they start from the advertising, then they go to the product page and so your product page is going to get the description, the product price, the images. Then if they're interested from the next step, they'll go into the cart page. This is by adding the item to the cart. And once they have the item in their cart, then they move to the checkout page. If they don't fall off there, then they move to the purchase. And then following the purchase, your relationship shouldn't be done there. You should be in the post-purchase follow-up. And so this could be advertising for different products and different upsells along the way. So I'm just gonna go over each stage and a few strategies how you can optimize each step to improve your sales funnel conversion rate. So to start off with advertising, I'm not gonna focus on that one. We're just gonna focus on the once the customer gets to your website here. So moving on to the product page. So when a customer or a potential customer first comes to your website, they're gonna hit your product page. And so key things to note here is you wanna have a really fast product page. You have one that's very intuitive, giving all the information the customer needs on the product, images, good description, good guarantees. This is all to ensure the customer has enough information to make a purchase decision. So the product page, other things you can do is you might want to collect their email. You can do this by offering a discount. You might want to subscribe them to your Facebook Messenger account and so you can send them follow up there. Because if the customer comes to your product page but never comes back, then that's a waste of a cost per click. It's a waste of paid advertising. and it's a, not a good use of your advertising budget. So you really want to make sure you can capture some information so you can follow up there. Another strategy is to use paid remarketing. So you can, as you hear, you can use Facebook, mess, or sorry, not Facebook Messenger. You can use Facebook ads, you can use Google ads. And so you can have those pixels installed on your website. So when a customer visits, it tells Google or Facebook or any other advertising medium such as Snapchat or TikTok that a customer has viewed your page. And from there, you can segment them into different audiences and you can advertise to people who have directly viewed. And it's a lot easier to get someone to convert who's seen your product or your website. Maybe they had to leave because they were busy, maybe they were interrupted. But once they know it's there, it's a lot easier to advertise them for to come back. And typically these will be your best Facebook and Google campaigns because the customer already has some affinity with your website. They have some interest, they've seen it, they've clicked on the ad, they have some knowledge and they're not directly a cold audience anymore, they're a little warmer. So that's the product page. You really wanna make sure customers know what the, really what the product is and you want to have steps to make sure if they do fall off the funnel you can speak to them again without having to buy cold clicks again so moving on to the next page here you're on the cart page so the cart page is also a good place to maybe collect their email address or their facebook because they've shown some interest and so a key thing about the cart page is you want to make the next steps to the checkout really easy you want to make sure it's a nice clear button you wanna make sure there's nothing else distracting it. The cart page is also a really good place for upsells and cross-sells. I didn't actually mention this with the product page as well, but throughout these stages, you wanna increase your average order size or your average order value, your AOV, and this can be done through cross-sells or upsells. Cross-sells is something, selling something of a similar nature for a similar price, whereas an upsell is selling something for more expensive price. So maybe for example, you're selling uh, pots and pans, and then as a cross-sell, you might sell a different type of pot and pan, maybe it's uh, a glass one versus a metal one. Maybe you're also selling other cutlery, other kitchen appliances to go along with the pot and pants order. 
an upsell maybe you have a really premium pot that instead of hundred dollars it's three hundred dollars and you want them to get to purchase that as well you could upsell that along the sequence and one of the best places to do it are on the product page and the cart page because the customer is already in the buying mindset especially if they get to the cart page so as we move from the cart page to the checkout page this is where the customer fills in their information and there are now a lot of new Shopify apps that have come out where they can take over the checkout process, make it a little smoother. But if you want to stick with Shopify's checkout process, it's battle tested. It works extremely well. And so here, you're also going to typically collect an email. So an email is when they want to enter their contact information. Shopify does have an automatic tool to have a checkout sequence where it can email customers just to follow up along the way. And so once they move to the checkout, this is where your purchase page, and this is where you're thanking them for your purchase. There are apps to do this in the Shopify app store as well, but if you, you really should have Klaviyo or some other marketing email automation set up, where as soon as a customer purchases, they get a thank you from you, your, you and your business to say, thank you for purchasing, here's your order summary, just to give them comfort that they've ordered it and to make them feel appreciative that they ordered from you. And so the last step, which I see a lot of stores not optimizing, is the post-purchase upsell. It's a lot easier to get a customer who has already purchased from you to purchase from you again. They trust your brand, they've maybe seen your products at this point, and you know they're interested, and they're very interested because they've purchased something. They've just pulled out their credit card, they've gone to your website, and they've purchased whatever they're looking for. And so ways to optimize this is you can do the same channels as before. So it's paid marketing, email follow-up, Facebook Messenger, cross-sells and upsells. We can stagger this. So instead of remarketing them right away, you could spread it out. So it could be 30 days, 60 days, maybe 90 days after they've purchased, you send some follow-up to make sure, hey, we, we know you like, did you like our products? Do you want something else? Maybe you could cross-sell them on something similar. As mentioned before, maybe if they just purchased the basic model of a pot and pan or something, you sell them a, the premium model because maybe that's a lot better for them and you can explain the benefits why. Another way to get immediate uh, increases or if you have a post-purchase upsell, so their credit card information is already inputted. They can just one-click add an item to their cart. This also might save them on shipping as it would bring everything together. You could also offer them a discount right after they purchase get another 30% off this many items. That's a good way to incentivize purchases because right after they purchase, it's already triggered in their mind that they decided to make this purchase. So to really go from an incremental increase isn't that much for a customer. If you've ever been through a click funnels funnel, it goes through that. So it starts off with something cheaper, maybe it's free, then it moves on to maybe like a $20, $30 product. Then the next page is a $300 product. Then maybe it's a master course that's six months long and it's $10,000. And so you want to take people through the sequence because it slowly increments them up. Because if you were to see a $10,000 purchase right away, it would turn you off. So you really want to increment the customers as we go through. So overall, this is the basic e-commerce funnel for Shopify. It's nice and easy to set up. And there are many ways to track this in Google Analytics. And there are many ways to track this in Google Analytics so you can see where people are dropping off. This gives you an idea of where to improve. If you can maybe make a 10% improvement in each stage here, it would do a lot for your conversion rate overall. It's just sort of incremental improvements. It's maybe split testing something, it's maybe watching some improvements and just seeing how that flows. Because overall, as you improve your conversion process, your cost per acquisition gets, be gets better. So it gets lower and then your return on ad spend also gets a lot better. And if your conversion rate is better overall, it means you can pay more for ads. And the person who can pay more, the most for a click is the person that's gonna win all the ad spend or all the ad, the potential people to, that they wanna buy from. So overall, this concludes my video on the basic e-commerce model for Shopify. If you like this video, just click a like below. If you have any questions, leave a comment. As always, hit that subscribe button below if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.